Good morning YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Today's video we are going to be talking about Maxillaria orchids. I have got a very fun Maxillaria orchid in bloom today. It is one of my blackest orchids that I can um, possibly find. Now in nature black is a very hard color to find and this is um, about as good as it gets almost. Now this guy is actually a very very dark dark purple orchid but he is so dark purple. Look at how black he looks. This guy is a Maxillaria, and I'm going to bring up the tag here. Chunkiana. And I've had it since last summer. Um, so this is its first bloom for me. And it did try to bloom last this early spring, and the buds actually aborted on it. So this is the first time I've actually got to see it bloom. I actually got to, um, you know, really have a look at this guy up close and personal. Just an awesome orchid. It's so black and the texture of the lip is so weird. It's almost shiny in there. It almost looks kind of wet, but it's not. So I threw a few photos of this up on Facebook there on um, Brad's Greenhouse Facebook page. And they were in like full sun and you could tell that they were purple at that point. It's early morning, the sun hasn't hit here yet. So they're, um, they're still looking pretty darn black to me. Now I'll just put them back down here. Then you can see the whole plant. There it is there. So it's in a four inch square pot. It's not a huge plant, not at all. Um, this guy, I decided I'm gonna try to give it very, very bright light. I read different things about it, how it needs shade, part shade, um, right up to bright light. So after the buds aborted early this spring, I thought I'm gonna just put it in one of the brightest spots. So it lived on the south wall of the greenhouse, not up quite so high as the Cattleyas, but sort of on a medium or a lower shelf. So it was bright, but a little bit cooler. I would call it intermediate temperatures, other than when the sun was shining on it, then it was just plain hot. I made sure to rewater it just as it approaches dryness. Right now the media is just kind of wet. It's a mix of bark and moss. Lots of new growth on it, tons of new bulbs. The new bulbs look a little bit better than the old bulbs. So since I've got it, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, probably 11 new bulbs. Those are sort of the original bulbs there. They're a little bit more shriveled. Bulbs do start to shrivel with age. But yeah, so I think sunlight was the key to getting this guy to, to bloom for me. And I'm super happy about it. I just love it. It's just so cute. Um, lots of bright light. Rewater just before it approaches dryness. This summer it's had conditions um, temperature wise for nighttime lows is down into about 60 Fahrenheit up into the 80s um, on the south window, you know, with the sun on it, it could get into the 90s right there, but it seems to have at least thrown off a couple for me. Now I'm gonna um, direct the camera just a little bit further up and I'm gonna show you another maxillaria. This maxillaria I've had for a few years now and it's giving me um, a summer bloom. Usually this guy blooms once a year and it blooms, it has usually about 100 flowers on it when it blooms. And so this is just sort of a bonus. I'm hoping that's not completely it, but if it is, we might as well enjoy it together as well. So this guy is also a maxillaria. I'm just grabbing the tag there. This guy here, there's the name of it, Melangrees. And I just discovered that this guy was blooming or in bud just last week and then all of a sudden it just came out with like tons and tons of flowers on it. Um, it is a reliable bloomer. It has been for the last three or four years. It just blooms and blooms every year. Uh, the first couple of years I got it or had it, it didn't really bloom. And I don't think I was giving it as much light as it needed, just like with the um, little black orchid there. But look at all the blooms that are coming out on this guy. It's in a big pot. This is a big plant. Tons of them. This is what was facing the light this time. The, um, this is sort of the thinner side of the pot and I wanted it to grow out more so I faced the back of the pot forward and the back of the pot is just loaded with blooms. So now it's sitting on the ground um, on the bottom shelf. I shouldn't say the ground but on the, the bottom shelf there on some foam and the back side of it is actually facing the other side of it which used to be the front is now facing the light and hopes to get some blooms coming out on that side. This guy is in a huge pot. I don't like them in that big of a pot. I transplanted it for the first time since I got it last winter and being the size of the plant here I'm going to back up the camera a bit so you can 
see the actual size of the plant here being the size of the plant is what it was in order to really pot it properly in a good pot I would have had to make like 10 divisions and I didn't want 10 of these plants around it just takes up too much space so that is what it is um, looking like um, it has been a little bit neglected for the summertime as I say I didn't even notice that it was in spike until last week it's had quite a bit of direct sun as well and I find that um, some of the leaves start to look a little ratty so you can take a pair of sterilized scissors almost and cut some of the um, the tips off them. You can see like th this tip here is dried off. So if you give it a diagonal cut, it will kind of make it more presentable. And there's another one there. And I would do this with like cymbidiums as well. It doesn't hurt the plant at all to cut um, the little dry tips off. Some people say it's fertilizer burn. Others just excess of heat from being in the sun. Um, so before we started, I just sterilized a pair of scissors with, with the rubbing alcohol. And I'm just looking at, like, there's one here that looks pretty bad. So I'll cut that one off. And we'll just make this a little bit more presentable. You can see I've done it in the past. There's an old one that I've cut off. It doesn't hurt anything at all. There's another one up there. This guy here is... And so I would do this to the plant before I brought it in the house for um, enjoyment. The other thing I might do is, because it has been, it was actually tucked right sort of behind us here in the south corner. Um, it's just been there. Never really talked much about it. Just sort of doing its thing. Uh, it gets water most of the time. Uh, this one I have found I've accidentally let it dry out a little bit more than um, I normally like to. There's a tiny bit of shriveling on some of the older bulbs in there. But it's not bad. Really beautiful flowers though. Let's just get one more close-up of those guys before we go. Quite nice. And this guy, as I say, he is so prolific now. Maybe it's due to his size, but he will literally have probably well over 100 flowers on him in blooming season. This isn't even blooming season. As I say, it's um, normally he um, does this in the, the wintertime. So this is just sort of a bonus. But anyways, that is a video on a couple of my maxillaria orchids. I love this black orchid. I hope you like it too. It looks really cool. Love it up close. The lip is just so weird. It's just so shiny and, and rough. But anyways, that's it for this time. Hopefully next time I show you this orchid, it's going to be twice this size with 10 times this amount of blooms on. That would be great. Imagine it's um, that size with covered in black flowers. It'll be just fantastic. So I'll let you go for now. Thanks again for joining me, and until next time, we'll see you later.